Hey guys, welcome to the shop. Today, me and my dad, we're gonna take this old 10 bolt axle. We're gonna go completely through it because we already did the rear axle on the truck. We want two axles with basically zero miles on them. So we got some awesome parts that we're gonna be putting in this thing and I'm excited to get started. So let me show you the parts that we got and we'll start tearing into this thing. So the parts that we're gonna be putting in the rear end of this truck are all from Yukon. Very similar build to what me and my dad did on the rear axle. In this front end, we're gonna be using a locker as well, which is really awesome. This thing should go like a stuck hog. So we're using a Yukon Duragrip locker in the front. We've got a master rebuild kit, just like we did in the rear. We've got some 4340 chromoly front axles, really nice, and a 373 matching gear set. So this is gonna be really awesome. I'm gonna get some of this stuff unboxed and we'll start tearing this front end down and putting in these new components. So a lot of you guys may remember that this front axle had quite a bit of water in it, and it had set with water in it for so long that it had started rusting inside of the diff housing. It had quite a bit of rust debris in it. It had rusted on the diff carrier, on the ring gear a bit. You know, I suspected that it potentially had set with water down inside of the pinion bearings. You know, and I'd always questioned just how good this front end was, so we will soon find out you know, by tearing this thing completely down, which I did not do before. I was just hoping. Well, we'll see how hope worked, and then we'll see how reality is once we get this thing tore down. Would it have lasted, you know, had I just hoped that it would have been good enough? It felt okay, so I'm not going to say that there was any big signs that there was any issue, but, you know, sometimes you just got to lay your eyes on it and see. So, big thanks to Yukon for the help on this front axle. I cannot wait to get this thing built and under the truck. Okay, so now we got to pull this hub off, and hopefully that rear bearing comes off without damaging the seal. So if you just hold on to the rear end there, I'm going to yeah. give it a ka-chunk. Okay. Yep, come off nice. No damage. So like I mentioned in the past, my dad is 81 years old, and for the majority of his life, he ran an automotive repair business out of our shop at home and done pretty well doing it. Raised five kids out of that little shop, and, you know, he's no... <laughs> He's not new to automotive repair, that's for sure. And in fact, this year model vehicle, 1980s, was probably his prime you know, when he was working on them the most. He, then he went on to quit automotive and retired from the state and has been retired for, I think, going on 20 years now. Pretty caught up on his own projects at home and sometimes loves to come down and help me out with mine. So big thanks to him. You know, I enjoy having him around to help. Space. You're always saving stuff you don't want to get rid of. Yeah. First thing you know, you, you've got a lot of storage space. <laughs> yeah. yeah, your shop, your workshop is turned into a storage shed. Yeah. That's a neat tool. Anybody could make one of those as yeah. well. Yeah. You could. This is not complicated. Let's 
Look at his ribbon. Right off of here. Go ahead and pull it off if it will. I can't believe how good them blocks works for that because they're fully adjustable. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's yeah. just like they're a special tool. Yeah, specially made for yeah. front ends and rear yeah. ends. <laughs> yeah. So when I tore this front end down originally, I did not pull the mm -hmm. ring and pinion out, didn't mess with any of that stuff because I didn't want to upset, upset the way that it was set up. But I suspected the whole time, because this front end had water in it originally, it had some water in it. I kind of suspected that the pinion bearings were not good in this thing. So when we take it apart, we'll see, you know, if if they were or not. But I would almost bet that we've got a pinion bearing issue in this. And the, and had I put it under the truck and run it, I may have had issue. So we'll see. That way, this bar's not quite long enough. Ready? Mm -hmm. okay. There we go. Feels like it's working. I think it is. The only problem with a heavier hammer is it's harder to swing. Let's see what that looks like. I know it's not in yet, but it's on. It's old. close, ain't it? <clears throat> okay. The heavier hammer worked better. Yeah, yeah. A little more, it's, it's, a little more uh, it's energy behind very it. Near the end. Like much. It's about to come out, so. Okay. Hold on just a second. There we go. Pinion out. Thank you. There we go. I suspected. Oh, yeah, there was some corrosion on that. Look at that. Mm -hmm. I don't know that it would have caused it to fail, but it sure wouldn't have helped it any. Flip it over and get the other one. So down inside of that pinion snout, there was a lot of rust and crust. So it's a good thing we're tearing this thing down. So something that I noticed on the rear end master kit that me and my dad done a couple weeks ago and then this front end master kit is that each one of them you know, has two crush sleeves in it. You, know, you only need one to set up a rear end ideally, but it's super easy to over torque that pinion and ruin a crush sleeve and once you've done that, you know, there's no going back. And you either order a new crush sleeve or you run to the store you know, and hope they have one. So for them to put two in these kits is pretty thoughtful. Save a lot of people some time. So that's nice. So going from open differentials to lockers, both front and rear, man, it should really change the way that this truck performs in, you know, in the mud or in the snow. I've heard people say, now you're never going to get stuck. Well, the only difference in between one with lockers and one without is that the truck with lockers just gets stuck farther out into the mud hole and is harder to get out. So, you know, it'll, it'll go quite a bit better. It also may affect the way that this thing drives on the road. It may not be quite as you know driver friendly now but as far as slick surfaces this thing should go pretty well 
So anytime you're putting in a gear set, you want to make sure that you're putting in the proper ratio, that what was labeled on the box is actually what you got. And the easiest and just the simplest way to do it is to count the number of teeth on the ring and divide that by the number of teeth on the pinion. So on our ring gear, we have 41 teeth. We're going to divide that by 11 on our pinion and we get 3.727. For, for all intents and purposes, that's 373s. So we do have the right ratio, especially when you're dealing with a four-wheel drive, because that would not be good to put two different ratios in your front end and rear end. So what I'm doing here is heating my ring gear up enough to where it expands just a bit so it will easily slide onto the carrier without having to you know, try to pull it on with all the bolts. You can see it's hung by all of the bolts, so they're all started. I've seen people heat the ring gear up and then try to slide them onto the carrier without any bolts started, but then you got to worry about your bolt holes being lined up. So if you hang the carrier or the ring gear from the bolts, they're already they're already in line. So all you do is, you know, heat it up. I've got 212 degree on my uh, heat marker there, that heat pin that I'm using. You know, and that's enough to expand this ring gear to where it slides on pretty easily. And that was a leather mallet, so, you know, no, no damage to nothing. No bolt damage, no torqued to one side ring gear. You know, it just falls on nice and easy and uh, makes it pretty painless. So if you want your day out on the open road to be pleasant, make sure and follow the torque specifications on these bolts here. It's important that this ring gear be seated on the carrier proper and that these stay put because if one of these comes out, just one, one of ten or twelve, how many ever you have, your day's over. This will totally detonate the whole rear end, ruin your entire setup, and chances are make your wallet weep. So make sure, clean all these out, use plenty of the cherry flavored Loctite on there to make sure that they stay put and torque them down proper. So I want to do a little cold weather update, shop cold weather update. So I was really concerned that this place was not going to hold heat at all and I was going to freeze to death all winter out here, but that's just not been the case. This wood stove has really done a great job. When I got up this morning it was 23 degrees Fahrenheit outside and there was a massive frost all over everything. And uh, when I come out here it was 46, 40, 44, 46 degrees in the shop because I'd had a fire the day before. Put a couple chunks in here, got it going again, and within an hour or two, we got it to 60 degrees in here, which is pretty nice. 60 degrees Fahrenheit, I can handle that. So, this is sufficient to heat this entire shop now that I got the ceiling and stuff, you know, insulated. It works pretty well, especially with that fan, because that'll keep the whole shop a consistent temperature. So, nice. Works well. Not perfect, you know. My mom wouldn't be happy out here. She'd freeze, but, you know. Me with a sweatshirt on, working, it's perfectly fine. So in my last video, I didn't touch on how I get these set up or where I start at. So this is the first time that I've dropped this carrier in the case. I tried to stick my factory shims in and they were just too thick because this carrier is wider than the factory one that was in here. So I'm starting from nothing really. So I did stick a factory shim over here, one of them, and then a thinner uh, shim out of the kit on this side just to see where I'm at. And obviously, that's way too little carrier preload, so that would never work. And pressed all the way over as far as I can it gets the pinion and rocking it, I got way too much backlash. So just for an initial first go, what this is telling me is that I need a much thinner shim on this side and a much thicker shim on this side to move the, all of this over and put some preload on these two bearings. So this is just a starting point. 
I'll mess with some shims and get it closer, and I'll bring you back. But that's it. Good starting point, I guess. So just to make it clear what's going on here, this is all a mock setup. My pinion has no pinion sleeve, or no, no crush sleeve, no pinion seal. The pinion bearings are the bearings that I ground the centers out so I don't have to press them on when I did the rear axle. So this is just a mock setup. And I will build this axle, torque it all down, just as if it was my final setup to make sure that I've got proper contact path, <laughs> proper preload on my carrier from side to side, and proper backlash. So this will all be tore back down when I go and put in the new pinion bearings, sleeves, or crush sleeve and seal. So about eight and a half to nine thousandths. That's a little on the high side, but it's still within the uh, setup specifications. So I'm gonna call that good. I'm not gonna mess with that anymore. There's no reason to try to get it a couple thousandths tighter. I don't think that I would benefit any really. Probably just cause me a lot of headache. So I'm gonna leave the backlash there and just call that good. Nothing wrong with nine thousandths, eight and a half thousandths. So, now it's time to check a pattern. So according to the paperwork, I mean, that looks pretty good. And I would have to say it's probably going to be tough to get it any better than this. So I'm just going to leave it, at, leave it as is. If I could change anything about this setup, it would be I would decrease my backlash by a couple thousandths. But I think that's really going to be hard to achieve with this type of rear end and the way that the shims are designed. I could, but I don't think that I'd gain anything, really. Uh, this being a front end, you know, it's not going to run like the rear end does. And it's still within spec. So, you know, I'm chasing my tail for a couple thousandths that probably in the end game won't mean a thing. So we're just going to leave it as is and call that good. So happy with the way that it all went together. It was super simple, to be honest. So let's take a quick detour from the axle, and I want to show you some of the work that Elizabeth had been doing. She's super helpful, if you haven't noticed, and she wanted to be the soundproofing girl and put all of the sound deadening material inside of the cab of this truck, and I have to say, she done a fantabulous job. She was really thorough and rolled that soundproofing material everywhere. She she even washed the, the cab of side, I guess. the truck, which I probably wouldn't have done. So she's pretty thorough when it comes to putting this stuff down. So really that. proud of her. She done an excellent job. And uh, she know from start to finish. Square All the soundproofing inside of the cab of this truck done good. by do my lovely assistant, okay, Elizabeth. Hey, Stephen, when I push that down. What is it? Like when this gets pushed down, there's gonna be a little That's bit. That's okay, we'll have scraps. Don't worry about it. Ain't gotta be perfect. So this is gonna get me all centered. Well, line it up like that.
For some odd reason, I'm done believing in this one thing I adore. What is love anymore? That looks very good. Thank you. So, not finished yet, right? Now we've got to do this and this floorboard side maybe potentially the roof but we're out yeah out of soundproofing material uh, that was one box I think it was 36 square feet it got me one door on the inside almost completely covered and then this far on the uh, on the floor of the truck so really if you had a truck like this one box I think would do the entire floor yeah but uh, yeah I'm gonna do the back here or I'm My lovely <laughs> assistant. She's so good at it. We'll let her do it. Uh, the back, and then I got to do this door, and potentially the the roof. Good job. Thank you. Knocking them on with a hammer, don't it? Yeah, it does. Just make sure that you don't damage them. So, 14 to 19 inch pounds rotational force for the new pinion bearing. So, we need to tighten that down and crush that crush slave until I can get 
what did I say, 14 to 19 inch pounds of rotational force. Yep. So let's start cranking her down and checking it. So crushing the sleeve and setting the bearing preload on these pinions, that's where everybody seems to have problems. The first thing, obviously, is just draw up all the slack from between the two bearings slowly, you know, and not try to bear, not try to create any bearing preload. Just get that slack out, and then you can slowly, from that point, increase your preload to whatever, whatever your rear end specifies. Slacks out. Like yeah, it slacks out. Now we need to be really careful. Yeah. And check first, and then we'll adjust some as we go. So that's about eight inch pounds right there, maybe nine. So we need to go quite a bit more than that, but it won't take much to make more than that. Just a few little, we probably won't need that tool. We'll just hit it a few times with the hammer and then check it because it probably will be a quarter of a rotation of that nut, if that. Yeah, it won't be much. <clears throat> Not very much. You could, <clears throat> could over-tighten it. Yeah, if you over-tighten it, then you have to pull it back down and yeah, replace the crush want, sleeve. You don't want to do that. So I just mark my socket, usually with a mark. That way I can see it moving. You got it? Oh, let's, let's see. I don't know how hard it'll be. Ready? You see it. See. Yeah. Too much. <clears throat> yeah, that, let's see. Check uh, it now. It, it tightened it up some. Yeah, that went a couple inch pounds tighter. So we're at 10 now. How much did it say? 14 to 19 inch 14 pounds. To 19. So let me double check. Yep, 14 to 19 inch pounds on new bearings. Let's, uh, <clears throat> let me just get a tool here you can hold it with. Just uh, something quick. Won't hurt the hands. Ready? Yeah. Hold it. I wouldn't. No, we're still at 10. Ready? Yeah. That's probably got it. Yeah, that's, that's pretty tight. Yeah, it's surprisingly tight. Yeah, that's that's 15 inch pounds. That's good. So that's it. Set. As good as you're gonna get it. Right mm -hmm. there. Yeah, I'm not gonna mess with any more than that. So there's a lot of questions when setting up a pinion, and I haven't done a bunch of them, but from reading the manual and just yeah. my experience doing these, is that with new bearings, 14 to 19 inch pounds on this particular rear end, and for the average guy, that that feels tight. Yeah. But, you know, that's what they recommend, so that's what we set it at. We're on the low side, we're at 15, but I'm not going to try to make it any tighter than that. That should be good. So it's always a good idea to do a final check, right? This is my final assembly. Everything's together just the way it is. Torque down. I could simply button the top on this. It's done. But it's always a good idea to do a final check. So did that, and it looks really, really good. So definitely satisfied with the way that this thing's went together. Hitting that seal. There it goes. Slick as a ribbon. Yeah, you got it. That's it. That's, That's in. in. That went good. <clears throat> yep.
need a tapper. I tap this thing through this joint. Mm -hmm. Just any hammer on right behind you. There we go. That's it. It's mm -hmm. in. Fell right in. So this axle is complete and it's obviously easier to put oil in this thing now than it will be when it's up under the truck. Now I'm just using a standard GL5 gear lubricant with the uh, Yukon uh, friction modifiers for the limited slip that I have in here. You got to make sure to run the proper lubricants with these you know, clutch related limited slip differentials. It can, uh, it can make them perform pretty bad if you don't. So hopefully everything works out okay. And I'm going to button this thing up and that's it. So both the front axle now and the rear axle are both completely gone through and for all intents and purposes zero mile. And we're done with axle work I guess other than putting this under the truck or at least I hope that is. But I don't expect to have any problems with this stuff. Everything went together just the way that it should. You know I didn't have a bit of problems. My dad was here to help as well which makes things nice because this is his home his home game right when he was working on vehicles full-time these were what were popular and he knows them extremely well so huge thanks to him it was a pleasure every minute that I got to work with him so big thanks to him and also big thanks to Yukon because these things both these axles now should go like a stuck hog. We had open differentials before and now we have lockers both front and rear. So you'll really have to try to get this thing stuck and I look forward to trying. So that's it, I guess. Thanks for watching. Viewers, patrons, subscribers, anybody who's helped me out whatsoever, much appreciated. So that's it. Merry Christmas, everyone. I'll see you next time. The birds fly south as the light Leaves your eyes Hold on to your dream Oh, I know you wanna scream Since the day you're born You're just a flower on your own Waiting for the sun to blossom through